Hi everyone, how you doing? Today, let's look at ceramic dental implants. Ceramic dental implants compared with titanium dental implants, ceramic ones look really nice, they're shiny, they're white. Are they the future of dental implants? Let's look at the facts, okay? And you'd be surprised at how similar zirconia and titanium implants are. Let's start with the biocompatibility. So let's look at these two materials. So in corner one, we have our titanium dental implant. It's been tried and tested, we've been using it for decades and decades, and it is a really good workhorse. The titanium is a grade 4 titanium. Titanium is a very non-reactive metal. If you look at it on the periodic table, it's very close to the noble metals, and the noble metals don't really do much, okay? And that's a really good thing, because we want it in the body to not really do much. However, when we have a dental implant, it's not actually our body touching titanium because the surface of the titanium implant is coated with titanium dioxide, okay? And this happens, it's a natural reaction, it happens within a few minutes of touching the, the outside air. And this titanium dioxide is really, really interesting because if you look at it at a, under, uh, at a molecular level, it's very, very similar to a ceramic. And although technically it's not a ceramic, it has very, very similar ceramic properties. So now if we're comparing how the body reacts with a titanium implant versus a ceramic implant, there's not a lot of difference in there. Now, I'm gonna talk about ceramic implants as well because this can be quite confusing. When we look at ceramic implants, we're looking at a zirconia implant. Now, where this can be a little bit confusing is when we talk about zirconium, okay, and zirconia, they're two separate things. Zirconium is a metal, and it behaves very much like a metal. In fact, on the periodic table, it's right next to titanium, which means that they're, again, they're very similar in their, in their chemical properties. Now, zirconium is used to create zirconia, okay, with the addition of oxygen and a, and a few other things. So it's not very reactive. It's got all the ceramic properties. Technically, it is a, a, a ceramic, unlike titanium dioxide, which is a very... It's a dioxide, but very similar properties to ceramic. So I'm going to call this one a draw. The actual surface, which is in contact with the human body, is very, very similar for a, zir a zirconia implant and a titanium implant. However, there is one important thing to consider, and I feel this is more of a theoretical thing than anything else, because if a titanium dental implant was to be damaged on its way in, it wouldn't have a chance to create that, um, that dioxide layer. So theoretically, the body could be in touch with the metal titanium. Now, the reason I think this is a theoretical risk or a theoretical consideration at least, is that it's, it's very difficult to damage an implant on its way in, okay? It's, like I do my implants one way, I don't know how anybody else do, does theirs, but when you're taught to do dental implants, you're extremely focused and gentle at the point where you're putting the dental implant in. The implant goes in, slow rotation, sometimes it's very tight, but the rotation speed is very low. So it's kind of unlikely that the surface of the dental implant is gonna get damaged on its way in. Next, let's look at the strength of the materials. Okay, so we've got our titanium and we've got our zirconia. If you watch my other videos, I have touched on this, but there's different ways that we can measure the strength. Okay, we can pull the materials apart, we can bend the materials, we can twist the materials, and every material is going to act in a slightly different way. But what's interesting is zirconia and the titanium act very, very similar if you were going to squish them together, if you were going to pull them apart, they, they would deform or break at the same point. If you're going to twist, um, put a, a flexure of force on them, again, they're going to have a similar strength. But where they do differ is in hardness. So zirconia is a much harder material and it's much more brittle as well. In the case that we're going to add a flexural force on the, on, on the two different materials, what we would find is that the titanium would bend first, whereas the zirconia would fracture. 
Okay, and this I feel is the biggest difference between the two different kinds of implants. So recently I attended a, a webinar where the, the scientific body was experimenting with zirconia versus titanium implants. And what they did was they put, a, a they put one of each implant in solid like cement or something, right? And then they had a dental bridge over the top and then they added a press over the top. And what we found was in the case of a titanium dental implant, the, the bridge itself broke Okay, but the titanium implant itself was fine. Uh, whereas the zirconia implant, the zirconia fractured before the bridge. Now, in real life, if, if my patient came in and something had broken, I would much rather the bridge have been broken or the crown have been broken because I can just unscrew that, remove it, have another one made, put it back. Okay, no anesthetic um, and just temporaries for a little while. It's a little bit of inconvenience for the patient. Whereas if we need to remove the whole dental implant, then that's a much more complicated process. Now, it's not like titanium implants never break. I've taken out plenty of broken titanium implants. And there have been studies comparing the long-term success rate of zirconia implants with titanium implants. And again, they are comparable. So it's difficult to say that one is worse than the other, okay? They're pretty, pretty similar. Now, in these studies, what they did find was that in both situations, the titanium and the zirconia, the thinner implants were more likely to fail than the, the fatter implants. And this, is, I feel, is just a physical property of the materials, of any material. The thicker it is, the stronger it's going to be. So if we look at zirconia implants, it used to be that they were all just a one-piece implant. Now, what I mean by this is you have the thread portion here. This goes within the bone. Then we have a smooth collar, and that's where the gum attaches to the implant. Then we've got this bit sticking out, and then we can put a crown over the top of that. And an implant like this is great where the implant and the tooth, everything lines up perfectly. Typically, this is towards the back of the mouth. At the front of the mouth, we need something else. We, we like to have what we call angle correction because there are a lot of situations where the implant can't be in a perfectly straight line with the, the rest of the tooth. I mean, sometimes it can, sometimes it can't. At the front of the mouth, I think we need to have a much more customizability of the shape of the dental implant. Okay, especially if we're looking for the most aesthetic kind of end result. Whenever I do a dental implant at the front, okay, and it's never a ceramic implant, by the way, we'll put the implant in, we'll shape the gum using our temporary materials, all using uh, our metal components on, on top of these dental implants, and that's how we get the, the kind of the ideal aesthetics. If we are forced to put in a, a, a ceramic implant, we've got no control over this. Now, for some people, this is not that big a problem, okay? The, the level of detail that I'm looking at in terms of the aesthetics is, is, is quite often more than what our patient is expecting. So if your expectations are like, hey, look, I just want a tooth, but I'd much rather it be a ceramic implant, then, then that's great, okay? Just be aware that it may not be perfectly symmetrical to the other natural teeth you have. Um, in the rest of your mouth. Now, there are certain companies that are making ceramic implants where there are two-piece components, okay? And what you can see here is, is it's like a titanium implant, the implant goes in and then you can connect whatever you want over the top. Now, this whatever you want over the top is still very limited, okay? For example, if we were going to do an all on four, I'm not aware of any dental implant company at the moment which is using ceramic dental implants uh, for all on fours. Okay, so what I mean by this is having what we call the angled abutments or multi-unit abutments with ceramic screws, all of this kind of stuff, you know, so that we can have a fully ceramic all on four solution. In a lot of dental implants where the there are ceramic two-part uh, implants, so what I mean by this is the implant is one section and then the abutment screws into this implant. The internal screw is metal. Okay, but again, this isn't in touch with the, the human body, but I know that for some people this is 
quite important. Nobel make a two-piece dental implant and they have a different material for the, the internal screw. Okay, so if that's a consideration, maybe look at that kind of implant. Maybe it will work for you. So on the webinar where I, which I described a moment ago, there was four dentists and they were all researching the, the ceramic implants and they were asked at the end, would they have a, a ceramic dental implant? And the answer, each of them was exactly the same and it was yes, in the right situation and in, from the right clinician. The experience of the clinician matters far more than the dental implant itself. If I was going to have one, um, okay, it wouldn't be my first choice because I personally have had so much success with titanium implants. I just know how they work. It's just a comfort zone thing for me. But if I was going to have a dental implant, which is a ceramic one, it would definitely be one of the back ones and it would definitely be one of the, the one piece ceramic implants. Now, the advantage of the one-piece ceramic implant is it purely in the strength of the whole thing. Okay, I think that's why they're primarily used for zirconia because zirconia is a, a, a more of a brittle material. Okay, and to combat that, I would rather have the whole thing without any screws and just a cement retained crown over the top. I think that would be a really successful solution right at the back where the aesthetics are not so important. And obviously I'd be finding someone who has done hundreds and hundreds of implants and is really, really comfortable with the whole surgical procedure because that is the most important aspect of all of this. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, you know, give it a thumbs up. Thank you for watching. And I hope you got something out of it. All right, guys, I'll see you soon. Take care.